Pulled the Darkness 344 here, and in today's video, I'll be doing a quick tutorial on this um, vertical right shifter, as well as explaining why you need the left shift and right shift operations in uh, your Minecraft computer. So first of all, we need to understand what a left shift or right shift actually does. So over here, I have a basic example. So as you can see, we have uh, 1, 10, 100, and 1,000 represented by these lamps over here. And you may recognize this as base 10, which is um, the decimal system that we use at the moment. So of course, yeah, zero to nine, pretty much just normal average numbers. So say we had the number 10. Um, this is um, in the tens column, as you can see by this lamp. However, if we left shift it by one, the number will now be 100. And all we're doing is shifting the number in this column over, well, the number in the tens column over to so the hundreds column, just like that. So now it's 10 times greater than it was. And if, say, we right shift it, we're just shifting it over by one. So instead of being 100, it'll now only be 10. So 10 times lesser than it was. And that's the same as multiplying or dividing by 10. So that's for base 10. If, if you shift uh, the number left or right in the columns, it'll just multiply or divide by 10. So in base 2, which is binary, we have a similar thing. But instead of um, multiplying or dividing by 10, we multiply or divide by 2. So say we had the number 5, so represented by 4 and 1, which is 5. If we multiply it by 2, so shift it left, we now have the number 10, so 8 and 2. But say we want to um, divide it by 2, so we're dividing the number 10 by 2, we shift it right, and now it equals 5. So of course you can shift it multiple times, so if I shift the number 5 left twice, which is the same as multiplying it by 4, because we multiply it by 2, then multiply it by 2 again, so if we shift it like that, it'll now equal 20, because 5 times um, 4 is 20. So why would we actually use this? So you might have a, a certain program that uses left or right shifts, and for instance, I know some um, software, kind of, I, I say software, com computer algorithms, a lot of them use left and right shift. and say you have a multiplication program you might want to be use you might want to use left shift but say you have a division program you might want to use right shift a lot and these operations um, you, you'll find that they are used in quite a lot of programs so it is quite essential that you actually have them built into your computer so one of the alternatives to a module like this is using a shift register which i will do a tutorial on in the future however they're kind of slow and uh, while you can shift multiple times on a shift register, it's much easier just um, doing multiple shift instructions. So if you wanted to shift the number um, left by three times, well, yes, you could just do that in one in, in one time on a shift register. But um, on like a, a module like this, you could just have three shift left instructions. So on your ALU, um, I'm going to assume you normally have your most significant bit at the top, especially on a vertical design like this. So whenever you want a left shift, all you're doing is moving the number here up by one place. And right shift is moving the number here uh, down by one. That's, that's pretty much what it does. So say we had the number, um, I'm not exactly sure what this is off the top of my head. But if we um, left shift it, all it is doing is multiplying it by two like that, and it's the same as right shifting. However, on an ALU like this, we can actually just left shift it just by adding it to itself. So actually, we'll do it with the number five. So we have the number five. If we want to left shift it by one, we can just pass in five on both the ALU inputs, effectively left shifting it or timesing it by two. And that is due to um, base two yeah, multiplying the number by two is the same as adding the number to itself. And the only thing we can't really do like that is um, dividing the number by two or right shifting. So that's when you actually need a dedicated module like this. So what this uh, module does normally is just um, output the number as its input and it only takes one tick to do so. 
and if we wanted to right shift then we can just click this lever here and it will just right shift the number down by um, one which is dividing it by two and this will also only take one tick so say you use a carry cancel adder which is three ticks by adding this module onto the output of the adder it's only going to be four ticks in total and you have the ability to right shift or left shift because you can just add the number to itself and that's already um, a few ALU options um, crossed off the list so it's, it's quite a good idea to have a module like this so some of you may be wondering well how about barrel shifting well that's extremely easy because all you have to do is well say you're barrel shifting left what you do is you take the carry out of your ALU and you'd pass it to the carry in and that's yeah that would work for left shifting barrel shift but for right shifting barrel shift uh, say on a module like this what you do is say we have this number here um, actually I think this is on and when we right shift it it goes down but it would have to wrap around to the top one but all we have to do is take the output of this and then loop it up say like a tower or something like this and just plug it into the top one so it's, it's not exactly hard to do barrel shift and then you can have just another option lever like this to uh, do that so enough talking now on to the actual um, build tutorial on how we build one of these so what we're going to have to do is let's actually bring out some lamps for this so it's a bit easier to see um let's just put them like this and i'll just break this tower so we have the inputs one two and four but what we're going to want to do is whenever we um, right shift we just want to divide it by two but that's fairly easy on a vertical computer because well a vertical bus or anything because all we're doing is bringing this one down by one so effectively um, it will now be on this so while you could just do that it's a bit space inefficient because you're gonna have to do that for all of them so you might have to have one here and or like we could just go wrap around like this and it's just gonna be a bit annoying plus you don't have the toggle system that my design has so what we're going to use is um, a thing called um, well we're just going to use comparators pretty much because if we put a comparator on invert mode we can control um, if the input um, goes to the output or not so let's have a lever here and say we input a one as you can see it's outputting a one but we can tell it well actually we will have to put a repeater like this but we can tell it to not output at all just like that so that's the same if it was outputting a zero um, of course it will still output a zero either way but um, in theory that is how it works so the first thing we're going to want to do is um, have three blocks so this is four blocks I'll just cut it down to three and what we can do is place a block like this and this will be um, just the normal output so while yes we can shift it uh, down by one say we just don't want to shift it we also have to have an output for that or else it'll always um, right shift it and that's that's not good basically so we can go like this and if we put comparators like this on invert mode uh, subtract mode I think it's called actually not invert mode then we can say I just do it this side we can put repeaters like this and you, you don't always need repeaters but I, I always stick repeaters going into comparator so it gets the full fifth well yeah so it gets the full signal strength and um, so it will always lock because this side you might actually have a repeater here so and if your tower is tall enough here you will also need repeaters here but just because of how comparators work with signal strength so we're just going to use a glass tower like this you can use slabs if you want as long as you are powering it from the bottom if you're on jar edition anyway um, or bedrock edition then we can build out like this and we'll just place a block like this right then um for now we can just place glass blocks like this so that means and if we put stone on top of these whenever we put some inputs in like this for instance we will get the outputs out here however when we turn this torch tile i mean i mean this glass tile on it'll lock these comparators um, by providing uh, stronger signal strength in the side than this over here and we'll get zeros out here so now what we can do is let me just turn these off is um, the second 
um, set of comparators to do the actual shifting. So to do that, um, we need to bring this block, or at least this redstone line, down to this redstone line and have the outputs here. So what we can do is block down by one like that. Um, we, we can actually do it over here, it, it can be fairly close. Have a comparator like this on subtract mode um, and have a block and a piece of redstone. So as you can see, because these we've used glass blocks here and they're transparent blocks, whenever we um, power this line, it will go up to the top one and also down the bottom one over here. So what we can do to only make it go down to the bottom one is just place a solid block on top of this. And because we're using solid blocks here anyway, when we stack it, as you can see if we have a comparator here like that, um, the redstone will only travel down because it has this, um, the solid block blocking it from going up, but the transparent block allowing it to go down. So what we'll do is just, actually I'll just leave this block here as a temporary thing, and we're just going to do this on all of them. So comparator, subtract mode, and block, and as you can see it goes down. And for the last digit we'll um, also just include one. So let's see, like this, subtract mode, block going down. And of course, um, this would be less than your normal three digits. So these are our outputs normally, but this one, so say this is one, two, and four, this one would be one over two, which is half of one. So you wouldn't actually normally use this um, when you're shifting. However, if you use a barrel shift design, uh, you just um, pass this through like a tower and it would go back up into your top one. But seeing as we're not doing a barrel shift, um, I'm just not going to include that for now. So the next thing we're going to do just to finish it off is place repeaters like this going into here, into these comparators, and actually I already have glass blocks here, and we can just make a tower like this going up and place redstone down like this. So actually, I think that also means we don't even need these blocks over here. So there we go, you only need two blocks like that. So that means, um, say we just put a redstone torch to invert this, and two levers, one on here, uh, yeah, this will be fine. So we put a number in, so we put the number two in. Normally, it will output two. Actually, let's have some lamps. We just break these so we can make the design a bit smaller. There we go. And I'll place one down here, just so we can see that digit actually works. So yeah, it is fine because we're not actually bringing it a block down because our output over here is the same as our input, it's on the same um, level, so it, it is actually working. It's just, I placed these lamps one up by accident. It, it doesn't really matter too much. So, as we can see, uh, normally our number just gets output on the same row. However, if we enable this line and then enable this one, as you can see, it gets shifted down by one. So, what we can do is to make these two work um, at the same time but with only one lever is we can just um, bring this down a bit like this and then we can bring a block under and place a redstone torch not lever a redstone torch like this going into a solid block so it powers all of this and that means if we place redstone down here to here and we'll just bring our lever down um, to here for Java players anyway, that means we can tell it to shift or not. So now let me just clean up these inputs a bit. So what I'm going to do is instead of having them down like this, I'll place them up by one. So it actually is on the same level. So say we have um, the number five in, if we right shift it, which is dividing it by two, just like that, we get out the number 2.5 because we have the number 2 over here, and we also have that 0.5 from earlier. Of course, um, this is kind of a bad example, you build it up a bit higher so you have more bits. So let's just show you on this one. So I think this is a slightly bigger design, I think we have these bits, we don't actually need these apparently. Um, so let's put the um, number 10 in here, so 1010, one, and normally we just get that out. But say we divide it by two, we get the number five out. So as you can see, it only takes one tick for the data to go through, and it's just a very simple design. 
um, that I'd heavily recommend you have on your ALU. So yeah, please like and subscribe. I hope this video kind of helped understand left shift and right shift a bit. Yeah, please like and subscribe and I'm out.